Hello and a warm welcome to another edition of Interview. I am Richard Doxery and my guests today are Rupert Lee, who is the project manager for the Water Resources Management Agency, the WRMA. And alongside Rupert is Jason Ernest, who is the acting director of the Water Resources Management Agency, WRMA. Now, why are we here today? Today, what we want to do is to discuss the Disaster Vulnerability Reduction Project specifically. And just to say quickly, two important things about this particular project is that one, it is the biggest financial arrangement between the government of St. Lucia and the World Bank to date. And the second thing about the, w uh, the DBRP is that it is designed to reduce the country's risk to disasters as it pertains to weather-related disasters as we live in an era of climate change. But of course, we're going to be learning a lot too about the WRMA, specifically its mandate and so on. So that's where I'm going to begin. Um, let me start with you, uh, Rupert. When we hear of anything to do with water in St. Lucia, generally the first company or institution that comes to mind happens to be WASCO. Yep. But here we have the Water Resources Management Agency, the WRMA, and by its very nomenclature, Water Resources Management, it does indicate that you have a very strong mandate to manage this very important resource in St. Lucia. So can you speak to, generally, briefly, the mandate of the WRMA? Briefly, it's mandate, and uh, it's suggestive in the, in the actual nomenclature, as you just said, is to manage water resources. So uh, we govern by an act, and this act establishes the WRMA for the purpose of managing water resources in St. Lucia. Now that's, a, that's a, um, a very critical role in uh, the well-being of the country as a whole. It impacts on health and so on when you speak about water resources and managing these resources that assists us in many ways. Um, you can think about uh, the tourism industry. We, we cannot have a tourism industry without water. Uh, I, I just mentioned the health of the nation depends on the availability of clean water as well. So water resources is, plays a critical role in a country's development. So that is why um, the WRMA was established to manage those resources. Mm -hmm. yeah, certainly, I mean, we heard a saying, and it's a cliche, perhaps an overused cliche, that water is life, but clearly we know that water is life. I mean, for my part, give me a choice between water and electricity. On any day, I will select water. I want the availability of water. Uh, but mm -hmm. Jason, I did say at the top of the introduction that when you have water, you have WASCO. In fact, that's a correlation. Is there some sort of direct or indirect relationship between the WRME and WASCO? Um, <coughs> I will say that uh, yes, there is, um, because the functions that are currently being undertaken by the agency was in fact being um, done by WASCO before the, um, the implementation of the, uh, the act that created the, the Water Resources Management Agency. So um, basically, um, WASCO and WRMA are two peas in a pod because we're both, uh, we're both in the interest of um, managing and protecting the water resources of St. Lucia. And uh, we are responsible for um, the abstraction of the water resource. And most of the, um, uh, the, um, the water supply comes from surface water in St. Lucia. And this is where WASCO primarily abstract their water. So we're responsible for protecting um, what happens in our watersheds. So WRMA and WASCO have a critical role because um, we do monitoring and WASCO also do their own monitoring of the, um, of the resource. And based on what uh, is seen in, in the watersheds that uh, may affect um, uh, the, uh, the, the quality and quantity, then we liaise with each other to see how best we can ameliorate the situation. Now, we have a long the bit of discussion that has been ongoing for a very long time in terms of how we manage water in the country, and perhaps globally as well, but we will stick to St. Lucia, this is where we live, and that there may be a sort of lack of appreciation for water 
even compared to electricity. Um, can you pull from your mind, Rupert, a water fact so that people can appreciate what goes on with uh, this very important resource in St. Lucia? A water fact locally uh, would be that, um, again, when you look at the WRMA, water resources implies exactly that, resources. And uh, when you think about a water resource, uh, Jason just mentioned surface water, but there's groundwater as well that is a resource. And so uh, we are cognizant of all those resources and we are responsible for its management. So a fact is uh, we want to look at watersheds in the country and we have 37 of those, of which seven we, we have looked at as being critical to uh, supplying the water uh, quantities that we need to the nation as a whole. So that's a fact that... Um, that uh, 37 watersheds. 37 watersheds, of which seven, we, we, we look at seven of those currently as being critical. That can change with time, mm -hmm. but currently we're looking at seven. We focus on seven of those. Uh, to manage these resources more, more closely mm -hmm. at this time. Okay. 47 watersheds mm. in St. Lucia. And uh, we forgo well, we have been hearing that the population has been diminishing to some extent. Mm -hmm. But are you satisfied, Jason, that the country is well prepared, given, and that is the emphasis here, that is going to be the emphasis of our discussion, that we live at a time when the climate is changing and that we expected to have worse droughts than before, that can we go to bed feeling comfortable that our water catchment, our water resource base is sufficient to be able to walk us through any disaster now or in the future? Well, <coughs> because of our size and location, there are limitations because most of the water that flows through our watersheds actually end up back to the sea. Um, we have one of a problem of storage. So f um, during the year that we would get um, uh, abundant rainfall, that water just flows to the sea. So Wasco only abstracts at the full capacity at that time. So the, the, the critical issue is one of storage. So as you mentioned that the, um, the, demand, the demand is expected to grow, then one of the things that we'd have to do is to find new sources of water, alternate, alternative um, sources of water. And one of the areas that they were looking at is actually in terms of uh, constructing a new reservoir that has been on the table for, for many in years. In Beaufort? Um, well, actually that one in the past, so they were looking at uh, Tumasi. Okay. Yes, yeah, somewhere on the Tumasi River. Mm -hmm. um, the Beaufort has also been uh, looked at, but uh, of, of as as of now, nothing much has really come okay. we'll, of we'll that. We'll stop here for now. We'll, we'll take a break. Uh, but I want to say to our viewers, uh, there's a lot more information that we're going to be giving you. And when we come back, we're going to have Jason continue what he was saying and then r focus about and on the DVRP and how it is assisting to build water stability in the country. Do stay with us. We'll be back shortly. The world's climate is changing, and that affects all of us. Storms are becoming increasingly intense. Periods of intense drought and heavy rain stress farm animals and destroy our crops. Higher average ocean temperatures kill our coral reefs and change the migratory patterns of fish. St. Lucia contributes only 0.0015% of global greenhouse gas emissions, but is doing its part, along with countries around the world, to reduce the emissions that are warming our world and changing our climate. These efforts are called mitigation. But decades of emissions have already changed the climate, and the greenhouse gases in the atmosphere today will increase average global temperatures even more. We need to adapt, that is, do everything we can to prepare for and respond to the actual and expected negative effects of climate change and everyone has a role to play. We need to protect our crops, build homes that withstand storms and keep our drains and waterways free of garbage to help us recover or bounce back from climatic events. Learn more about the Government of St. Lucia's National Adaptation Plan and the steps you can take to protect yourself and your fellow St. Lucians. 
A very warm welcome back and thank you for staying with us. We speaking with Rupert Lee, who is the project manager for the WRMA and Jason Ernest, who is the acting director of the Water Resources Management Agency, the WRMA. And just before we left, we were speaking to the how do we ensure that we have a steady supply of water before, during and post a disaster. But just before I allow Jason to come in, let me just tell you, give you a fact about the DVRP. That is the Disaster Vulnerability Reduction Project. Don't know if you know, but did you know that the Denry Infant School was constructed utilizing funds from the DVRP? This is something that if you didn't know, now you know. So back to what you were saying earlier to continue, Jason. Yes, so um, as I mentioned that it's, it's one in terms of uh, um, the, the storage of the resource. So this is one of the areas that um, we're looking to push in terms of conservation. So conservation not only in terms uh, of the, in the environment, but also in terms of uh, at a household level so that that resource persons are constantly aware that, you know, the resource has a value and that it should be it should be protected and one of the things that we at WRMA are doing is in terms of okay looking at wasco intakes as a baseline so it's there how best we can protect it so that the water quality is not affected because the more wasco has to shift the intakes higher up into the watershed that means less of the, the water resource that they would have at particular times of the year because in St. Lucia we have many tributaries and WASCO mm -hmm. have the intakes on tributaries. So the higher up you go, the, um, uh, the, the drainage area you have coming into those areas would be sig significantly diminished mm -hmm. and that would affect um, the areas that are being supplied um, from from those intakes, so it's one of protecting what we have now, mm -hmm. and then seeing um, what um, uh, initiatives that w we can implement to actually um, uh, augment our water supply. Yeah, yeah. I, I must say uh, just before you come in, I know you wanted to add something, but but I must say from the information that you have so far disseminated, that it is clear that the WRMA is um, undertaking this money in a very thorough way, and clearly you. Uh, from what you have said thus far, that you're very, I say, serious, for so using just a, a mundane word, of ensuring that the country has, you know, a portable supply of water, d is regardless of whatever circumstances that we are faced with. Yes, Robert? Yeah, I wanted to hasten to add as well. Uh, um, when you, we look at uh, our mandate, again, it's managing water resources. And when you think about r water resources, uh, the supply of that resource comes from through rainfall as well as water intrusion through the sea. So, and that the, the, the rainfall is clear, it's and, and that's what translates into what we call surface water and ground water uh, in the upper reaches of the watersheds. Uh, water intrusion through saline wedges in, in the sea also contributes, and that, that's mainly through groundwater. But to expound on what Jason was speaking about to do with one of our mandates, one of, of, of our functions is to promote water conservation. So you can look at a water resource, a country's water resource, in more than one way. You could focus on conservation as well. And when we promote water conservation, that assists us retaining what we have as a resource because then you, you're managing that resource in an efficient way. So if we, uh, um, to water users, we promote the conservation of water, then that awareness will assist us in maintaining uh, uh, a healthy integrity of that water resource mm. to start with. Yeah. But also we need to think about management. Now I know when we started, you, you raised the question about our relationship with WASCO. We also have a close relationship with uh, the forestry department because that is critical in the watershed. Forests is, is one of the uh, uh, um, entities that, that helps us protect that resource in that it reduces evaporation, for instance. 
and um, it, it and and trees forest trees retain water one secondly they they are critical in um, maintaining um, slopes um, um, keeping the, the the structural integrity of slopes intact and preventing um, what we, know, we we always have uh, a problem with during times of storms landslides and so on whenever you have a landslide you lose mm -hmm. your a portion of your water resource through groundwater mm -hmm. and so on. And um, when I speak of groundwater in the upper reaches of, of a watershed, that groundwater emerges as surface water, a portion of that groundwater emerges as surface water yeah. downstream of any stream. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yes, you get infiltration and the trees would help you with that. So that's another uh, uh, organization or entity that we work with closely mm -hmm. in order to protect that resource. Good. So there's this kind of um, integrated approach to exactly. ensuring that we have, uh, you know, a steady supply of water. Let's mm -hmm. speak specifically to the DVRP as it pertains, Jason, to the watershed management plan mm -hmm. that was funded for the disaster vulnerability reduction project. Tell us a little <coughs> about that. Okay. So um, the, the agency as a whole, um, we have many um, uh, stakeholder partners and to actually engage your stakeholder partners, <coughs> you need to have the facts on the ground as to what is happening. And since we're moving towards an integrated um, uh, water resource uh, management um, approach, so um, it's basically compromising for everybody because everybody uses the watershed, whether you, whether you know it or not, you, you use the watershed. So then, um, in the agency... And by the way, just before we mm. move on, mm. explain in, mm. in very simple terms, what is a watershed? Okay, um, a watershed is an area where the, um, the water that flows in that, on, in that landmass, um, if it were to, let's say, reach, go to the sea, it, it would all accumulate at a particular point. So wherever in that landmass that you would pour that drop of water, it would end up at a particular point. So that's what it is. So the, um, uh, the watershed is surrounded by a ridge. So everything within that ridge falls within that particular specific area. Okay. Right? So I in a nutshell, that's basically what it is. Yeah. yeah. Maybe I could yeah. add to that. Yeah. Where that's when it Maybe your viewers might be wondering, we said, said 37 watersheds, how do we know? And so on. Wh that, and that is the question you, you're asking, how do we define a watershed? And Jason mentioned that uh, it flows to the sea. That's the critical part. You have tributaries and you have rivers, and tributaries feed into rivers. What would guide you defining a watershed is when you look at our coast, where you see an outfall into the ocean. You start from there and then you work backwards. Yeah. Now when you work backwards and you f walk up that river, you'll see the tributaries, but then if you look up, you'll see the ridge, the mountain ridge, and a watershed implies that the water is shed as it falls. And so some would, so if you look at Millet and you look at uh, another area next to Millet, that's another watershed. Um, there'd be a mountain ridge that splits the rainfall to on both sides and flows down into mm -hmm. that river or that river okay. or that tributary. Mm -hmm. And that's what defines what a watershed would be. Mm -hmm. So you'd have the ro Rose watershed. We have a Castries watershed, which is very complex. Mm -hmm. And we have different ones, uh, Mabuya, Valley, and so on. Okay. So back to the yes. DPRP's intervention. Yes. So, so the watershed management plan. So what it is, is basically characterizing the watershed. So like we mentioned, we have 47 watersheds, but uh, some may be similar and some may be very distinct based on what is happening. So in order to have that integrated water resources management approach, you need to know exactly what is happening in the watershed. Now from the WRMA point of view, we look at it in terms of uh, water quantity and water quality. So once you know what is happening, 
you could almost, it's almost like going and take a blood test. So with that, you could actually have an idea as to what is happening in the watershed and basically what measures you can take to bring it to um, uh, the point that you, you want to, basically. And okay, so we, we have about mm. just 30 seconds, but yeah. that's okay, so you will continue with this, but then mm. we go to part two of our discussion mm where we will delve a lot more deeply into the DVRP's intervention, which is what we have started anyway, yes, okay. and to speak a lot more to other issues pertaining to the DVRP. So you do stay with us, mm -hmm. and just hold on for the second part of the discussion. Mm -hmm. Very fascinating discussion to date, to inform you as to what the DVRP is and some of the interventions being addressed through the Disaster mm -hmm. Vulnerability Reduction Project. We'll see you in a very short time.